life is like a journey on a road that's long and winding. It is filled with warm, bright mountains and valleys dark and cold. I have learned that as I travel, life will sometimes seem unraveled. But because of your great mercy, I am never on my own. Even when the path is scary, and I feel my feet grow weary, when the rocks cause me to stumble, and I feel like I may fall, Lord, your grace will gently lead me, and your hand will keep me steady. And your word, it will remind me that I'll never walk alone. When each turn is unexpected, and my path is redirected, and I'm faced with daily trials of life and love and loss, when I cannot find a Closer than a brother, and you will me to keep walking as I gaze upon your cross. Even when the path is scary, and I feel my feet grow weary, when the rocks cause me to stumble, and I feel like I may fall, Lord, your grace will gently lead. Your hand will keep me steady, and your word it will remind me that I'll never walk trials are behind me and I see on the horizon my final resting place with the finish line before me I will enter into glory and the journey will be over when I see you face to face even when the past scary and I feel my feet grow weary when the rocks cause me to stumble and I feel like I may fall Lord your grace will gently lead me and your hand will keep me steady and your word it will remind me that I'll never walk Hi everyone, welcome to Barry Interesting. I'm obviously not Barry Acock, but I'm your host for today. My name is Michelle Acock, Barry's wife. I wanna introduce Eric and Tana O'Dell, our guests today. Thank you all for coming and spending time Thanks with us. Thanks for having us. Absolutely. So tell us a little, bit, a little bit about the O'Dells before we get started in talking about um, our other topics for today. How did you all meet? Tell us your story. Uh, we met at Three Rivers College back in 1996. We were both involved in the music department and the Baptist Student Union. Um, so we knew each other from, from being involved in, in those two, two areas. But about 10 years went, no, about eight years went by. Um, 
and we were kind of set up by his cousin that I knew and then a friend of mine that she had married. And um, at first, you know, I said, no, I don't want to do this, you know, but I knew him and he was such a great, good, great guy that our first date was actually here at Malden at a singing event. So we were just discussing the other day that it seems like our first date plus when we first met at Three Rivers and then just our, our whole relationship has always revolved around music and music in the church in particular, because even our first date was in a church. In a church yeah. with music. Yeah. So music is obviously a backbone of your relationship, or it, it does seem that way. Um, tell us about the early years and how music either maybe shaped or was influential in your relationship and your family's life. So at, at the start, um, where did it all start from a music perspective? Uh, for me, just we grew up with music in the home. Um, my mom's side and my dad's side of the family were both very musical. Mm -hmm. And um, you know, I always joke and say that growing up, you either had to sing, play an instrument, or you just had to move out. That's just, <laughs> you know, that's just the way it was, uh -huh. you know. Yeah, I know how that goes. How yeah. about for you, Tom? Same thing, my family was musical. It was very important to my mother that my sister and I take piano lessons. And even though I kind of bucked her on that a little bit, I was always a musical child. and. Um, our pianist at church was my music teacher. She still plays piano at our church today and gives my daughters piano lessons. And so we've extended that to our daughters. But I always kind of fought my mom on it because I always wanted to play what I wanted to play. And I was very aggravated about having, even as a young child, about having to learn the notes on the page. And obviously now I'm very glad that I did because I can read music and that's very helpful. But my grandpa played guitar, uh, my mom sang, and so it was very common around holidays or even just family dinners and gatherings that my sister would play the piano or I would play, my grandpa would play guitar and we'd all just, we'd stand around and sing hymns. You know, that was just something that was very mm. important um, in our family time together. So we grew up with that strong influence of church music and hymns in particular. The purpose of music is different for us. We've always, in fact, last night we had jazz music on last night on YouTube, and our daughter, our oldest daughter came in and she said, why are you listening to this? Mm -hmm. And Eric said, why not? And I said, Lydia, we love jazz. Like we, and when she left, I said, we've always introduced our kids to different styles of music, and we like different styles, but as far as where we feel called right now, that influence of where our family took us and what they felt like was important in life, the hymns in particular, it's just where we're at right now. It's, mm -hmm. am I saying that right? It's just where we feel. It's where you feel called and led. Well, and because we believe God is an artist. He's an artist in creation. He's an artist in music. And the Bible, I don't know how many times because I've never counted it, but throughout the Psalms, the Psalms were written as songs mm -hmm. um, to be sung in the temple. And the Bible in particular talks about music. I can read one of them right now. One of the verses that we, we use with our kids is Colossians 3.16. And it says, let the message about Christ and all its richness fill your lives. Teach and counsel each other with all wisdom he gives. Sing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs to God with thankful hearts. And whatever you do or say, do it as a representative of the Lord. So he commands us to sing and and. We just see music as different right now for us. We still enjoy all sorts of music, um, but we see the purpose of where he's called us as different. And I think that influence, and I know we've talked about it for him and I both, was there at a very early age through church music and hymns for this purpose. Well, tell us some of the groups or the people that you've sang with on your journey. Um, I started traveling singing when I was 13 uh, with my grandparents. And um, I traveled with them for a couple of years. And then um, I started traveling with my brother and a friend and a, a cousin. And we sang all a cappella music. Uh, we were called Second Coming. Second Coming, okay. And um, we, we did that for several years, uh, stayed really busy doing that. Um, mm -hmm. Then after I graduated high school, I. Um, I joined the group Full Circle. They're okay. you know, a local group from around the small area. Jim and Lisa area. King. Yeah. Yes. And I, I traveled with them for five or six years. And uh, then I got out because I, I wanted to take some time off and really concentrate on 
you know, settling down, mm -hmm. maybe starting a family, you know, trying to a date a little bit because, <laughs> you know, <laughs> growing up, we were singing every weekend, you uh -huh. know, between school and... Not a lot of time for socializing. Not, not a lot yeah. at all. So um, yeah. I took time off, you know, for, for that, but I didn't stay out very long. Mm -hmm. It was kind of in my blood and I, I just yeah. felt like I had to do it. So yeah. um, my brother and another friend of ours formed a group and we started traveling singing. And the name of that group was? That uh, was Dayspring. Dayspring, yeah. yes. We traveled for probably five or six years and then mm -hmm. made the switch to uh, 60 West. Yes. Uh, same, same group, just a different name. Different name. Mm -hmm. So all, basically all my life mm -hmm. I've been on the road <laughs> singing. Singing. Yeah, singing. and Until the last 10 years, eight yeah, years. Yeah, and um, <clears throat> you know, I, I really have grown a lot in the last 10 years or so, and, and I realize now that, that the, the, the church, you know, and serving in your local church is actually more important than, than what we were doing. You know, the, the, That's a great point. The, you know, kind of taking the, the, I don't know how you'd say it. The, the ministry or the evangelism that you were doing. Yeah, the, the, the local ministry mm -hmm. seems to be more important than the traveling ministry, you know, to actually yeah. worship week in, week out with the people you do life with. Mm -hmm. you know, is is just amazing. And, and I feel very blessed to be called to that right now. That is a very good point because you're in your ministry, you're doing what you feel like you're supposed to do, yet you're missing that connection with your local community and your local church and serving mm -hmm. there. So um, you say you feel blessed to have that now, that connection. It, it sounds like it's something that you didn't know was missing from your life. Yeah, because it... it it's just the way life right. was, you know, right. just, yeah. we just traveled mm -hmm. and, and did our thing. Yeah. And, and um, you were doing what you were called to do at the time. Right. Life changes and priorities change. Mm -hmm. So let's, um, let's go forward into, let's talk about writing. How did you all get into writing music, specifically <clears throat> hymns? Well, um, I wrote songs even as far back as when I was in college. So 20 years ago, we were talking last night and he's written some and so it's hard to even from years ago so it's hard to even count how many we've written um but about three years ago we attended a conference and it was really a worship conference since we're worship leaders at our church and at that conference they emphasized congregational singing and the importance of congregational singing and that really started to influence us and really hit home with us and it was after that that we started writing some hymns. That love for hymns, that history that we had with our families started to really evolve and grow. And um, we just started we just started collaborating and doing it. I mean, really, once we got married, we had a child. Our first child was born about 11 months later. And so as a parent, you know how busy your life gets. I mean, your, sure. your life just revolves around the kids. and. Of course, we were always in church and we were always taking our kids to church functions, but there wasn't a lot of time to sit and be creative, mm -hmm. to be Absolutely. a writer. Mm -hmm. And that takes time and thought and study, biblical study, to write theological hymns. It takes mm -hmm. time. It's different than just a typical praise and worship song. And so when the kids were younger, we just didn't have time for it. And I think it's naturally been a progression because they've gotten older and we have found more time to sit and think and just dwell and, and be able to be creative in that aspect. So what would you say is your inspiration for writing these? Um, I think it all goes back to scripture. You know, it doesn't matter, you know, it, it all has to be true, mm -hmm. especially in this genre. Mm -hmm. Truth matters. Yeah. And, um, you know, we read in John chapter four, about the Samaritan woman at the well, her conversation with Jesus. And he said that true worshipers of God will worship in spirit and in truth. Yeah. You know, when you worship in spirit, your heart is engaged. Mm -hmm. When you worship in truth, your mind is engaged. And it only works one way. What you know about God fuels your affections for God. Mm -hmm. But you can, you can feel all you want to for God, but it doesn't change what you know about him. So what you write when it comes to hymns has to be rooted and grounded 
in, in the word, in the truth. Um, yeah, and I think, you know, there are emotional experiences, trials in life. A lot of the hymns that we've written have come out of very dark times or trials that we've walked through. But in those times is when you go to the word mm -hmm. because it's the only, it's the only thing you can cling to. Mm -hmm. And out of that is when we've, we've had those, not every hymn's been written out of dark trying times, but, uh, but several. So do you want to talk about one in particular <clears throat> that's really special to us? Yeah, I, um, back in, um, 2019, February, my mom passed away after a battle with breast cancer. And, um, you know, she was just a, a woman of immense faith. You mm -hmm. know, she was, she was the one that kind of anchored our family, you know, in making sure that we were involved in church, making sure that we were, you know, doing what we should do, mm -hmm. you know, and you know, when, whenever she passed, um, I don't know, there, there was just that, that void there, you know, because my mom was that person that I could go to and talk to about anything. And Very we, close, it sounds yeah, like. Yeah, yeah, and with, um, you know, there were a lot of circumstances surrounding, you know, taking care of what needed to be taken care of mm -hmm. after she passed. And, you know, it just kind of seemed like... Um, I was under so much stress, you know, more stress than I'd ever been in my life um, because of the busyness and mm -hmm. not really feeling like you could properly mourn. Right. And, and it just seemed like, um, you know, things were just kind of piling mm -hmm. on top of each other. And, um, and he was carrying all that on his own because he didn't, I, go, I don't think he wanted to involve the kids and I in it. He didn't want the, he, you didn't want us to know, you know, that that's that stress of, was there. That's a burden to carry all by yourself. But, um, you know, that there were so many times over the course of, I mean, that year, the following year that, um, you know, I felt like I could be in a room full of people and be all by myself. You know, I just felt like no one understood what I was going through, even though I know so many people go through this. Mm -hmm. You know, um, and I remember several times that year just you know, kind of being like David in the Psalms and, and just asking God, you know, how long is this going to mm -hmm. go on like this, you know? But um, I remember waking up on the one year anniversary of her death and just feeling like I needed to get out of the house. You know, I couldn't, I just couldn't stay here. Mm -hmm. I have to, to be alone. So I went for a drive and I remember driving just kind of out in the middle of nowhere and I just pulled over on the side of the road and I started praying. And I said, you know, God, I believe that everything is done for our good and for your glory. But I don't see how this is good for me. Mm -hmm. And I don't see how you're getting any glory from this. And um, when I ended my prayer, I remember just driving away and I turned on the stereo in my truck and I had a, a CD in the, in the player and it was just old Irish melodies. And it was just instrumental music that I kind of used in some of my quiet times and, mm -hmm. and whatnot. And this song came on. Um, it's called Where the River Shannon Flows. And as I was listening to this song, these lyrics just kind of started coming to mind. And it was in that moment that I felt for the first time in a year that God actually, you know, was answering my mm -hmm. prayers, letting, letting me know that even though I felt alone over the course of that past year that he had never left my side he had he had always been there you know and it that's just kind of how the song came about um it was a one-year process of of grieving and mm -hmm. and feeling alone was that your first the first hymn you wrote no, or this, no. this one was just extra special <clears throat> to you because of your experience yeah yeah mm -hmm. it, it, it was the first time that i had written a song out of an experience you know I that see. You know, I, I heard a long time ago that that um, you either write what you experience or you will experience what you write about, mm. you know, so, you know, mm -hmm. and that has proven to be true so yeah. far. We have two of your books here, Tana. Um, so let's talk about the process that resulted in this. 
Okay. And, and they are two very different books, so maybe you can tell us a little yeah. bit about them. So on Christmas Together, my husband didn't even know, Eric didn't even know that I was writing this because I didn't know this was the first book that I'd written and I didn't know if it would come and to be a reality. Mm -hmm. So kind of jumping back to what we talked about with the influence of our grandparents and our parents, uh, this book, I wanted something for my children to be able to tangibly have that reflected the influence, the biblical, the godly training that my parents and grandparents had given me and mm -hmm. my sister as a child. And um, so this book has, it starts on each page, it goes 25 days through September, so it's, I mean, December, excuse me, mm -hmm. December 1st, so it's kind of an Advent book, mm -hmm. all the way till December 25th, so Christmas, and um, each page starts with scripture, and then a little story about the, Christ it leads you through the Christmas story mm -hmm. um, that matches the scripture. So the daily goal is to read a short scripture and read a little snippet about that story. And then my memories are flooded with candy making, mm -hmm. time in the kitchen with my grandparents, especially my grandma and my mom, and the memories and the love that went into all of that. Mm -hmm. And so I wanted my kids to have that. So this book is full of our favorite family recipes, a lot of my grandma's recipes, my mom's, and um, I wanted that to be passed down to my children. So it's definitely biblical focused, mm -hmm. but it's got the fun cooking and the activities yes. in there. That's what I wanted to point out too, is it's so fun, the activities that you've put in there too. I've, I've read this book and, you know, we can get very, very busy during the Christmas season. This helps, I can see very easily how it would help focus a family on doing these things. And in the process, you've learned so much more about Jesus, about the Christmas story and that kind of thing and had a lot of fun along the and way. And I've added a song in there for the kids yes. to sing or yes. for us to sing, you know. This is a, it's a great activity for the whole month of December. And, and I think they're short enough. I also wanted to focus on them being short enough that you could do your little devotion with your kids at any age, like a mm -hmm. three-year-old's attention span mm -hmm. to even up to a 15, 16 year old right. adult, I you know, agree. that you would have time. Cause like you said, lives are busy, especially those three weeks leading up to Christmas. Right. It's, it's really busy. So I just wanted it to be a resource that my kids could always have and that others could use if they wanted. So I think a lot of people will identify with those memories I hope so. of being at Christmas oh, yeah. time, being with family or having special things that they do through the Christmas season that you don't do any other time right. of the year. And, and um, they just make you feel warm and yes, comforted and yes. safe. Yes, absolutely. And if yeah. you didn't have that experience, this is a great way right. to start that for your own family. Right. Um, so tell us about uh, the other book you have here. You want to talk about that? Yeah, um, our pastor approached us a few years ago and said he was going to write an Advent book um, that mainly focused on the doctrines of God to, to take families deeper into the Word. And um, he asked us to... He asked us to... Uh, to choose a hymn to accompany each each day of the of the, of the read, and um, you know we actually went in and dug, did a lot of research on each of these songs, and found a backstory to kind of kind of make the song come alive. Mm -hmm. And um, I I just remember learning so much, you know, through through the uh, the research that we did on each of these, and and it. Uh, you know, really, when you look at some of the stories involved in in the writing of these hymns, it that that in itself become an inspiration to us. I believe, mm -hmm. you know, to to kind of uh, help us help bring us along in our songwriting right. careers. Well, that's so true because a lot of the songs we sing in church, we have no idea what birthed that thought. Right. That ins what right. was the inspiration for that? And hymn. when you do find it mm -hmm. out, we were we were talking again yesterday. It really does make the lyrics come alive and you connect with that song on a different level. Mm -hmm. It just makes it so much more real. And when you connect, you remember it. It sticks mm -hmm. with you. It's part of who you, it becomes part right. of who you are. Yeah. Um, so where can people find these books? If these they are to on Amazon, Barnes and Noble. Um, there's a few, other, there's, they're, they're on lots of different book download websites. I don't even know all of them that they're on because okay. there's so many, but I think the biggest ones are Amazon and Barnes and Noble. Okay. Most people use Amazon, I think, mm -hmm. but they're, they're easily accessible on there. Perfect. Good.
people need these for the Christmas season. Won't be long, we'll be there. Oh, that's um, right. Let's talk about, you, you touched on it briefly. This book was important for you um, to leave something for your kids. How do you involve your kids in music at home? <clears throat> You, you've touched on it a few times through, throughout this interview, but yeah. tell us a little more. Well, with our youngest, she wakes up and she's involved. I mean, she can't, she can't <laughs> sit still. She has to dance. She has to sing. She, you know, she's constantly... Uh -huh. Making know, a song out of everything. <laughs> yeah. um, everything. Our, our oldest, on the other hand, she, while she is musical, she's... Uh, Just more shy about she, it. She really She's is. always been very shy about it. But... Yeah. Um, we, we always try to, to make a point, you know, we don't do it perfectly, but we try to, to sing hymns with our kids at night before we go to bed, you know, do devotions and, and whatnot. And um, I think, you know, the more we can be consistent in that, the more it, it lays a, a foundation for, mm -hmm. you know, and when, once they see the importance and the commands of God to sing and, and to be involved musically, you know, we, we just have to trust that that, that will that will take root and, right. and will sprout, you know, in their in their own lives. Yeah, and we try to help them understand too what Scripture says about music and singing, and that the purpose of these songs is that they will carry them with them through life, mm -hmm. and that in those trials and hard circumstances, those will be comforting to them along mm -hmm. with Scripture. Because mm -hmm. I know most of us can probably sing lyrics to a hymn that we've known since we were mm -hmm. five or six years old. And in those times in life when we need it, it's going to always be there. Absolutely. What is it about hymns that connect people to the Word in a way that worship songs, or I should say differently than worship songs? Because I love them both. I know that there seems to always be at some level um, discussion about one or the other and how much you should have of one or the other in involved in your church service. But I think there's a place for both, and I think mm -hmm. we should always enjoy both. But what is it about hymns that connect people to this level of worship that's different than praise and worship songs? Um, I think it comes down to, you know, hymns are less commercial. You know, mm -hmm. contemporary Christian music and even modern praise and worship has kind of become a business, you know, and... And um, you know, in, I think in the I don't know, in in the quest, I guess, to to make things more mainstream and mm -hmm. more commercial, we kind of lose focus on truths, the theology. Yeah, mm -hmm. we uh, that we, certain lines that are being written are biblically accurate. Mm -hmm. You know, and I think once uh, I think people are hungry for truth, mm -hmm. and. I think that's why we always kind of circle back to, to him. To hymns. And we do a mix of both, too, at our churches, but we are very particular, probably more so in the last five years, about examining lyrics before we use any song, mm -hmm. whether it be a hymn or a praise and worship song, to make sure that it is aligned with Scripture correctly. Um, hymns, you know, you think about hymn writers, great hymn writers like Fanny Crosby, who I think they've even discovered a whole new set of her hymns that were hidden for like a hundred years that modern artists like Chris Tomlin and some of the others have, have written. I think it was just the lyrics they discovered, but they've written melodies and put out a whole new album. People like her, I mean, she was blind. She walked through trials. She was not commercialized. She writ that, wrote thousands of lyrics and scriptures and um, scripture songs, I should say, that people didn't even know about. And I think hymns can just be more of a... I shouldn't say more personal. How do I, I don't know, what should I say? Hymns just tend to connect Bible, the Word. I think that's the purpose of hymns, is to be theologically driven. Mm -hmm. Whereas the purpose of a praise and worship song may be a little different. I think it's important to be theological. You know, mm -hmm. am I making sense? The Word, if you pick out any old hymn, most have become very theolog or they've been written from a theological biblical perspective. Mm -hmm. I would agree. And I think that there is even a change in mainstream worship back to songs that sound similar to mm -hmm. the hymns we grew up. You're kind of um, seeing that in the last five years or so. Um, in that. So as you're leading in worship, tell us about 
how special it is for the two of you to do that together. I mean, it, it is very special to be able to do this together. I mean, a lot of times Tana will lead vocally and I'll, I'll play bass, you know, in the, I guess the band, it's not, not much <laughs> of a band. We have bass and piano and, and organ at our church. Mm -hmm. But um, I think we go back to um, the congregation. You know, that's the reason we started writing is that the congregation would, would have how new do you material all, to sing. How do you all feel um, leading your congregation in worship? Well, you know, at this conference that we went to, it was one of the first times we'd ever heard it, um, that the congregation should be singing louder than what we sing. Mm -hmm. And that's how we feel. Like the very first song we wrote, Jesus, King and Lord of All, the first time, you know, of course, we were nervous to present it to our church. We were nervous to do it. But I'll never forget the first time, maybe more so the second time. We sang it the first time just to present it. And then the second time we, we had done it, of course, it was out on YouTube and some of our church people had listened to it. But we left and Eric just, he said that was such an overwhelming feeling to hear that, hear the congregation singing it. Mm -hmm. That's that's the purpose of what we write, is to hear God's people singing it together loudly. Mm -hmm. You know, and mm -hmm. that's a, that is the coolest feeling in the world. Um, it's, it's gratifying when, when the, the purpose for your writing is accomplished. You know? Right. And that's what we, also when we're writing, the melodies, the words, we have to not only try to fit it in theologically, but we, we focus on now, is this something that would be easy for a congregation to sing? Right. Not from a performance perspective, right. but from a congregational singing perspective. Does the melody line lend itself to something that people can sing easily? Mm -hmm. And do these words fit together in the right way where people There's can sing There's some technical it? things that there have are. to be considered, aren't there? Is, is this a good key that men and women can both sing? That's in? a right. tough <laughs> one because he leads sometimes and then we have to switch keys if we're going to sing it, you know, yeah. as a congregation. Yeah. Because a lot of old hymns are written way high. So mm -hmm. we try to write our our new hymns in a key that everybody can sing. But there are a lot of things to think about when you're writing for a congregation that you wouldn't necessarily think about if you were just performing. Mm -hmm. Right. Well, what are your long-term goals with your ministry and music and your writing? We're already old, so I don't know about long-term <laughs> goals. You're not old. <laughs> um, to keep doing what we're doing, to just keep being faithful. We don't know. I guess like in any aspect of our lives, we don't know what God has next. Mm -hmm. You know, I've been a teacher for middle school history for 19 years, and um, my intentions are to keep going mm -hmm. until I retire, unless God has something different. I will say that music has always been a passion of mine, even though my mom forced me to take those piano lessons you know, at the time I was thinking, I don't want to do this, but we were, we were talking last night about how when CMT became a big thing and how I would watch those country music videos and I would, I always wanted to see, now who's singing that? Mm -hmm. That was important to me, mm -hmm. even as an eight-year-old kid, to know who's the person behind this song. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of odd because not everybody does that. My parents would always say, how do you know who is singing the song? Well, I paid attention. Mm -hmm. Music has always been, when I would open a CD cover, even as a teenager, mm -hmm. I'd want to read who wrote this and, oh, who played guitar on this? Mm -hmm. I don't know why I wanted to know those things other than the fact that it was just important to me. Mm -hmm. And God has given me the opportunity to be a teacher. That's obviously his plan for my life, and it has been for the last 19 years. But he's also given us the opportunity to be worship leaders at our mm -hmm. church in Puxico. So he's given us that, that I don't know what his plans are next. Mm -hmm. I think somewhere in the back of my mind, down deep, it's always been an idea that wouldn't it be the neatest thing to have a career being a, a hymn writer or a music, mm -hmm. being involved in music somehow, whether it's a production side, behind the scenes, I don't love, love, love being out in front of people. So I'm not sure performance is necessarily what I would ever be talking about, <laughs> but music has always been there mm -hmm. since I was very, very young. And I know that we would both be willing if God led to dive deeper into this. Mm -hmm. But for now, just being faithful and serving in our church, 
that's where you're is called. where we feel God has us, and that's we are fine with that. Mm -hmm. Like that's we're we're overjoyed to be able to serve God in that way. Is that what success looks like to you? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. yep. To just to hear the congregation saying mm -hmm. is it's all we need, all the success that we need. That's great. Well, it's a picture of eternity. Yeah. That's a great point. You know, point. on average, we only have 100 and anywhere from 150 to a little over 200 in our church every Sunday. But when you hear 150 to 200 people singing together, mm -hmm. that's all, that's success. Mm -hmm. And like you said, a picture of eternity mm -hmm. where there will be, I don't know, millions. Myriads millions upon of myriads. Yeah, right. Yeah. Of people singing together in worship. Yeah. yeah. Um, so do you have any projects? down the road, more immediate, maybe not long-term, but more immediate that are coming up? Yeah, uh, we, we've put out singles so far, but um, we're, we're planning on compiling all those into our first hymns album um, coming up, okay. you know, sometime shortly. Okay. Um, there'll be Rooted Hymns, Volume 1, I believe. It's a great, uh, great title. We're, we're looking, really looking forward to that and just seeing how God's going to use that. That'd so we, awesome. we decided to call it Rooted Hymns, and I want to share this. I want to share this so everybody will understand. Um, in Jeremiah 17, 7, 8, verses 7 and 8, Jeremiah 17, it says, But blessed are those. Actually, I'm going to go back, if you don't mind. Please do. And I'm going to read verse 5. This is what the Lord says. Cursed are those who put their trust in mere humans, who rely on human strength and turn their hearts away from the Lord. They are like stunted shrubs in the desert with no hope for the future. They will live in the barren wilderness in an uninhabited, salty land. But blessed are those who trust in the Lord and have made the Lord their hope and confidence. They are like trees planted along a riverbank with roots that reach deep into the water. Such trees are not bothered by the heat or worried by long months of drought. Their leaves stay green and they never stop producing fruit. And that makes me emotional because when we go back to why I wrote the first book, we are called to be parents. Mm -hmm. God gave us our precious little girls and our first mission is that we raise them in fear and admonition of the Lord. Mm -hmm. And we want to lead them to the shore of the living water. Yeah. We want to lead them there. And it's our hope and prayer that they grow roots mm -hmm. that will not wither and that will withstand the storms of life because just like he spoke of earlier, we are all bound to go through storms and trials. I mean, Christ told us to take up our cross and follow him. And I know as parents, we all just absolutely fear the idea that our children will have to walk through dark times in life. Mm -hmm. But that's very important to us that we teach them to dig, to grow those deep roots. And Christ will grow them, just like our parents and grandparents helped us mm -hmm. grow those roots. And so really all of this started in our conversations with our children, didn't it? Yeah. And singing those hymns at night with them. And then out of singing those hymns at night about three years ago and having these theological conversations and trying to to get them to understand who God is, how much he loves us, what his plan is for our salvation. That's where all of this started. So that's where we get the whole rooted hymns idea mm -hmm. is through that verse. Well, how special it is that they have parents like you to do that for them. I grew up with hymns, grew up with singing also. I'll never forget it. And it's made me who I am today. So you've done a great thing. And you've helped other people add that to their life too, by your books here, by your, your project that's coming up, which we're very anxiously awaiting. Um, so how special that must be uh, for them to have you. And that's awesome. Very, very happy about that. And you know, Jesus said we would have troubles and trials, but take heart because I've overcome the world. Right. So you're leading them to him. What they do, what would, you know, what our kids do with that beyond that is up to them, right. but you've, You've done what you're supposed to do, and this is awesome that you've shared it, not only with your children, but with others who can also tap into that. That's a very big resource, very important resource. So I really appreciate you all coming and speaking with us about this.
Thanks for having us. Yeah, Absolutely. You. We only hope that um, everyone checks these books out, that you run out and have to <laughs> have them <Yeah>. reproduced <laughs> all over again. But uh, thanks so much. We Thank appreciate you. you for telling us your story okay. and, and letting us know what's going on with you guys, okay? Thank right. you. Absolutely. Thank you for joining us today on Very Interesting. While we had the Odells here, we were privileged to have them play some of their music for us. So stay tuned to hear some of their music. Boundless mercy, full and free, undeserved, how can it be? Where sin abounds, your grace is more. All glory to Christ the Lord. In love you walked the Calvary road, despised and dying all alone. On the cross, our dead erased, ruined sinners to reclaim. Triumphant over death and sin, love's redeeming work is done. Hallelujah, the battle won. What a Savior, what a friend, my Redeemer is to me. Jesus, boundless mercy for drawing nigh with our last breath we glorify you in our gaze our great reward sing your praise Merciful and free, boundless mercy full.